Oh boy. Guess who decided to stroll in on this tournament, <laughs> especially on this video. We've got the champ, Ed Parker, the champ champ, and he's going up against Showtime East in a round two fight. Let's go. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Are you listening? Ricky J. Sparks. What is going on, people? This is Ricky J, man, from Ricky J Sports, and I have a treat for you guys today. It's the champ champ, Ed Parker. He's won all of my PS4 tournament fights, and he's going up against Showtime East. So let's see what happens here. Is Parker going to be pushed to the limits here, or is he going to cruise to another tournament victory? And already we're seeing Showtime East maybe throwing a little curveball at Ed Parker trying to take him down to the mat and for people that follow Ed Parker and know how he fights the majority of his fights are on the feet so maybe Showtime believes that if he can get that fight to the mat he can get that W and shock the uh, UFC 3 community and move on to the next round but to stand here in front of Ed Parker while he's using Conor McGregor is not the best strategy man so he's got to move in my opinion, Parker's got the best stand-up in this game. So you have to be mindful of that, respect that, and switch up your game plan, man. And he's trying to fire right back. When guys are pressuring you like this, though, I feel like two pieces are the best. If you go three piece or more combos, I feel like they end up wearing you out and stunning you and dropping you. So when you're getting pushed like this, it's always good to jab, and just throw two pieces and circle away. And Parker is putting some pressure on him. <laughs> Showtime East is going for the home run hit right here. Or shall I say he's going for the Showtime move. And um, it's not working so far. It's not working so far. And this is what Ed Parker does, man. He'll just pick you apart. Oh, nice try. He'll just pick you apart and eventually wear you down, man. And I'm trying to think of the whole point of um, the throw right there. I guess he just doesn't want to get wrapped around Khabib's grappling skills. Ooh, <laughs> that's always a, a funky animation on that takedown defense. And I'm, what I'm hoping we see, I don't know if it's going to happen though, but when Ed Parker stuffs takedowns, he loves to go for double unders or he'll even swing the individual, his, sorry, what I mean by he'll swing his opponent's like upper body and get right into side control, I believe it is. So hopefully we get to see that. It's a very unique takedown defense. But I believe in this fight, man, we will see it, I'm hoping, if Showtime continues going for, for takedown, takedowns. If he keeps on shooting, we'll see some cool Ed Parker takedown defenses. But at this point... Showtime East, the stamina is going down, and um, he's just searching for answers right here. And Parker being patient, being calculated. Oh, how is that not a wobble or a drop? And that's the perfect round, in my opinion, for Ed Parker. Stuffs the takedowns, doesn't get placed on his back, picks his opponent apart, and at this point, Showtime needs to... You know, he's got to think of a different strategy on beating Ed Parker. In my opinion, maybe go for some clinch action and try to, it's, it's easier said than done, man, but try to get that takedown if you can and hold him down and try to beat him up on the mat. But Conor McGregor, he's got great takedown defense ratings in this game. His takedown defense is killer. Oh my gosh, double, double uppercut. And nice way of getting out right there. I think, see how he got out there? It was to the right. And I think that's the better way of getting out instead of going up. Because most guys will think that you're going up to get out. And he went to the side. So that's a nice little trick to, um, to know about right there. And Parker's just putting on the pressure. This is uh, it's a clinic, man. It's a clinic of stand-up skills. And he's not overthrowing too. I, I like that. He's not trying to 
win in the first minute of the round. It's just touching them, going up high, going down low, being patient, utilizing that octagon time. Oh my gosh. He's got wobbled. Oh, Parker's getting nasty. Parker's getting nasty with the flare. He knows the ladies are watching. He knows the ladies are watching. Uh-oh. Oh, this is a turn of events right here. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have a point to make. A little story time action. If he, if uh, right after this, man. But uh oh, could Parker be in trouble? He's got a lot of stamina though. And but you see how, in my opinion, going for this submission was a mistake. Prove me wrong, but that gave Ed Parker some time to recover. But um, back to my little story about the ladies watching. I remember growing up, man. If I knew my crush was watching me play basketball or play soccer or play baseball, I felt like I, you know, I turned into He-Man. I felt like I had another gear. I even played hockey as well. But if I knew the girls were watching, I felt like I turned into Superman, man. But if I was just playing with my brother in the driveway, I wouldn't be as good. But if I knew a, a girl was watching, especially somebody I liked, I turned into Michael Jordan, man. And it was just awesome. But anyway... Let me know if you feel like that too. If you know someone or know somebody that plays sports that when they know that girls are watching, they just turn into a superhuman individual. <laughs> but anyway, let's get back to the fight here. Hopefully that story made sense. Some good job by Showtime, man. He, he showed some great signs here of scoring for the first time. You know, in, in this round and, and doing a nice job, but it seems like Ed Parker has recovered. And let's see if Showtime can survive. And the one thing, uh oh, look at this. A little glitch action here. <laughs> look at this. What is this? What is this? Both guys know what's up. Oh my gosh. I think it's if you flick it and the guy tries to get out, he loses a ton of stamina. So both of those guys were just staying put right there. That was very interesting. So I think Ed Parker was flicking up on mount and hoping that Showtime would try to transition. He would lose a ton of stamina. So both guys knew what was up and they stayed <laughs> stayed put in that position. But Showtime's looking for that home run hit, isn't he? He's looking for that home run hit. And speaking of hit, Parker's stamina took a bit of a hit, didn't it? It seemed like... Parker was smooth sailing until he got cracked. Uh-oh. Oh, Parker kind of missed that window to finish the fight there. I don't know why McGregor didn't pounce on him. He was throwing punches. But this is what Showtime East needs to do. He's got to go for that home run hit. Don't win by volume. Win by home run swings, by uppercuts, overhands, flying knees. And Parker's being cautious. He understands his stamina. That's the thing about using Conor McGregor, man. He doesn't have the greatest stamina. The greatest first round fighter in UFC history. And Parker just can't seem to crack through the block of Khabib here. Showtime's doing a good job blocking. It's almost like this fight has took a crazy turn it looked like Parker was gonna run away with this fight and now you know Parker's still in control but Showtime's got a chance man doesn't he stamina's the same you know it both guys are hurt a little bit I know Showtime's been hurt a little bit more or a lot more uh oh but he's got a chance Oh my gosh! What are we playing? Mortal Kombat? <laughs> Holy cow! What a KO by Ed Parker. And he is just on fire right now. What a victory. But you gotta give it up for Showtime, people. He put a good fight on in this first fight. But look at this KO! And he went right through the block right there. What a fantastic ability to um, understand the moment and take advantage of it advantage of it and seize that moment what a victory so here we go the second fight and showtime in my opinion from what we've seen in that first fight he did a 
a great selection here of picking GSP. Oh, and he's Rock Parker. He's Rock Parker. So let's see what he can do, man. If I'm in Showtime's corner, just, just fight, have fun. You have nothing to lose. You're facing the champ. And Parker using Bisbing. So Bisbing is obviously not like Conor McGregor in that he doesn't have that crazy punching power, but he does have the stamina game. And that will help Parker, but he gets taken down here. And this could be a great strategy for Showtime. And... <laughs> I'm on the edge of my seat in this in this fight already. Cause you know Showtime's gonna bring it. And especially when guys are good at grappling and they use GSP. GSP's got the greatest top game in this game in my opinion. He gets the mount. And I'm wa <laughs> I'm watching this fight, man, sitting on a lazy boy chair. And I'm rocking back and forth, man. Like a grandma reading a story to the kids on the edge of my seat rocking back and forth and if you're wondering you're like what well, Ricky how come you're not using an office chair why would you use an office chair when you're relaxing and watching fights and on the computer I use a lazy boy chair I thought about it too I'm like why should I should I get a sports gaming chair or whatever I'm like those aren't comfortable so I decided to get a nice cushion leather lazy boy because when I'm relaxing I want to um, be comfortable and I don't want the good old booty to be sore if you know what I mean but anyway <laughs> we're off on tangents like we always do on this channel but I just wanted to let you know always sitting on a lazy boy when I'm making videos playing games calling fights and that's the way to go man just so comfortable it hugs you <laughs> but anyway let's get back to the fight here Parker's doing a nice job of not getting you know, you're not getting hit with anything significant right here, but you got you got to give it up for Showtime, for the control right here, the nice warm blanket, <laughs> doing a fantastic job. He's a good grappler, man. I don't know who Showtime East is. You know, um, I do play on ranked. By the way, I'm 65th. Can you give it up for that, man? Give me a thumbs up for that. I'm 65th on ranked currently on my uh, hidden account. And, um, yeah, I didn't really see Showtime East on the leaderboards, but this guy is legit. He is legit, and he is in a great spot right here. And look at Parker's stamina's down. His stamina's down. He's taking shots. And what a fantastic round for Showtime. You got to give that round for Showtime. And good job taking the first loss and then coming back right here with a great round. But this is... <laughs> Not UFC 1 or the early UFC days. Every round starts off on the feet. So it's a matter of what can Showtime do on the feet and not absorb the onslaught of Ed Parker's strikes here. Because it's not like the good old UFC days. Remember when Hoist Gracie fought Ken Shamrock in the first super fight? And it was basically shamrock falling asleep in hoist gracie's guard for 45 minutes <laughs> and they didn't stand him up until the overtime but now in ufc rules here every fight starts on the feet and what a rock by showtime showtime's feeling it man he is hanging he is hanging with the great ed parker and this is good for him man put together a fantastic first round and got an early stun uh oh, he's going for takedowns here. Let's see what happens. He's stalling out. Gets the uh, double under and gets the nice belly to belly suplex. <laughs> Remember Andre the Giant had the greatest belly to belly suplex? You'd always worry that he would, you know, bury his opponent on the canvas because he was so heavy and then he would throw his opponent down. Crazy, crazy stuff. He tries to get crucifix right here. Showtime's doing a nice job neutralizing Ed Parker's striking game in this second fight. And this is what he needed to do. Using a guy with great grappling skills and trying to take away that striking, the elite striking of Parker. And this is what Parker wants, man. Parker wants to keep the fight on the feet. He wants to pick you apart in the boxing kicking range. He doesn't want to grapple. You know he knows how to grapple, but that's not his way of winning. So 
So this is the um, the dicey time for Showtime. I'm not saying he needs to win these exchanges, but he just can't be taking crazy damage. Can't be getting rocked. And if... Oh, this is where... This is so crucial right here with a minute and 30 or so left. He has to understand that he got the rock in this round. He had the top control. If he could just keep this round neutral and not get rocked he's gonna have two rounds in the books and then all he needs to do is survive round three so he's got to fight smart here holy cow I'm so nervous and he gets another rock this is definitely gonna solidify him his his stamina is down though but it's definitely gonna solidify his round here he's gonna get the victory I would hang out don't get up I would have um, stayed on the mat for a little bit longer but you know what I'm saying? The strategy into this fight. He's won the first two rounds. And he gets that takedown. This is definitely his round, man. The first one was his as well. So this third round just needs to survive. And we could be going to a third and deciding fight. Holy cow. Um, you know what, man? I'm not going to lie. I'm hoping it goes to a third fight because I just love... The third fight when both guys are on the brink of being eliminated. But, um, you know, it's easier said than done. Because if there's one guy that could battle back in a fight, it's Ed Parker, man. And Ed Parker is going to be looking to look for openings. He may be a little more aggressive, too, because he knows he needs to swim upstream here. He knows he needs a finish to win this fight. And you know Ed Parker has better things to do. <laughs> he doesn't want to get into that third fight. So let's see what happens. Let's see. Oh, nice. Oh, no. He gets away. Because Showtime, that's what he needs to do. He needs to lock Ed Parker up. Ed Parker is just too good on the feet. And you know another thing, too? Parker loves to be conservative with his punches and not overcommit on certain exchanges. But when you have the aggressive Ed Parker... Sometimes, man, <laughs> it's like, not sometimes, most times, it's dangerous, it's deadly. And this is what we're going to see. We're going to see that aggressive Ed Parker. But at this point, this is what Showtime wants, man. He wants slow dancing action. <laughs> he could <laughs> transition back and forth. Oh, good takedown defense. But this is what he wants. He wants to slow down the pace of this fight. I don't think he was too happy with seeing Ed Parker whipping punches. Oh, <laughs> For a second, I thought the fight was done. And Showtime's in trouble. Spit out the mouthpiece. <laughs> Spit out the mouthpiece. <laughs> Do something to slow this fight down. And you could tell, though, he's trying to kill the clock, isn't he? By stalling here. He's going to try to go for a takedown like he did earlier on in this fight. Oh, nice. Sneaks in the tie. Gets a denial. Oh, big punches. Parker's hurt. Oh, no. Could it be over? It's over! Holy smoke of Rooney's! Showtime East putting on the fight of his life and tying up the series against the champ champ, one of the most decorated virtual fighters in EA Sports UFC 3. Ed Parker goes down in the second fight and we are moving on to a third and deciding fight. What a victory for Showtime. He just put together the best game plan. Utilized his wrestling. That clinch game, though, in my opinion, is what won him the fight. The clinch game was awesome. And then he showed good skills on the feet and basically just didn't allow Ed Parker to go off. And, man, what a victory. So here we go. This is it. The third and deciding fight. If you're tuning in for the first time, it's a best two out of three falls, man. So it's first guy to win two fights moves on to the next round. So what are we going to see here? Oh, no. I hope Showtime... Oh, my gosh. He went with Robbie the Brawler Lawler. <laughs> That's not his nickname. Robbie Lawler should have put that as his nickname. Come on, Robbie the Brawler Lawler. But... What is Showtime doing? Showtime, in my opinion, if I had to give you the scouting report on Showtime, he's a fantastic wrestler. And instead of going with someone who's 
a great wrestler, he decides to go with Robbie Lawler in this real fight tournament action. So he, I guess he believes his stand-up game is better than Parker and he feels like he can take out Parker here. But what won him those, that fight, that last fight that we just saw was his grappling ability. So in my opinion, I could be wrong and watch him prove me wrong here. But I just think this is not a good strategy. And just standing in front of Parker and exchanging is not the best thing to do. Maybe he'll just go for takedowns, but... Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, that's the... <laughs> Parker's just too good. Why? Why are you doing this to me? I believe Showtime would have had a great chance. It's not over, but he would have had a great chance if he wrestled. Well, let's see what happens. Sorry, my emotions are getting the best of me in this fight here, man. Oh my gosh, could it be over? Holy cow. In my opinion, Ed Parker using Diaz. Diaz has the best boxing in this game. This is good for him. This complements all about that Ed Parker rhythm. And Diaz has the stamina, the head health, the quick hands, not the power. But Parker doesn't need it. And look at this. Showtime getting thrown around here. Oh my gosh. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. This is... Oh no. Oh no. He came so close. And like I've been repeating myself, it was just a bad selection of picking Robbie Lawler. It does not compliment showtime skills and there you have it the champ champ is moving on what a fantastic performance by both guys i was highly entertained by that matchup oh man fantastic stuff that's the beauty about this tournament is that you get a guy like showtime east that can put a guy like ed parker the champ to the limits and almost get a victory it was so close but ed parker with the overall better game wins and moves on to the next round. But anyhow, people, I'll end off this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hit me up with a like if you can. And I'll catch you in the next one. This is Ricky J, baby, from Ricky J Sports. And you are awesome. This is what we call... I drink it, Michael Chucky. Sometimes I say to myself, I say, self, the mic is too low. So how about we crank it up? Pump, pump. What is going on, my fellow YouTubers? And I have... I have a dream that one day I'll hit 100,000 subscribers. And then we'll do meetups at parks. And people will bring KFC chicken, and we'll have a picnic, and we'll just talk about fights, and talk about UFC, and all that stuff. Is that ever going to happen? It's not going to happen. Is that ever going to happen? It's not going to happen. Maybe. Don't don't rule it out. Don't rule it out. Okay. That'll be great if I do a meet and greet. It'll be bad if I do a meet and greet, and nobody comes to greet me, so it's just a meet. <laughs> a meet no one. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go.